Voice assistants are becoming more intelligent and capable of supporting complex tasks and dialogues. People use them for controlling their smart home, asking casual questions, listening to music, do online shopping, and much more. However, despite the broad range of use cases and increasingly advanced language understanding, they are still interacting mainly in a reactive manner, responding to the user's inquiry. The interaction starts with users saying the wake word followed by an inquiry, and only then the agent responds to the user. But this might change in the near future. The next major evolutionary stage for voice assistants will be their capability to initiate interactions by themselves. With rapid advances in AI, natural language understanding, and sensing techniques, computers are becoming more capable of understanding users' behaviors, preferences, intentions, and surroundings. This opens up a broad landscape of opportunities for proactive interactions. Hi, my name is Nima Zargam and I present to your paper Understanding Circumstances for Desirable Proactive Behavior of Voice Assistants that I did together with Leon Reichels, Michael Bonford, Sarah Teres Volkel, Johannes Schuning, Rainer Malaka, and Yvonne Rogers. Proactive behaviors from voice assistants are considered as agent-initiated interactions triggered by events related to users and their environment, as opposed to user-initiated inquiries or pre-configured actions such as reminders, alerts, or routines set by the user. Previous research have begun to examine proactive behavior of voice assistants and propose to use it for specific situations and environments. Others have looked into the timing of proactive interruptions and how such interruptions should be designed. However, the current state of research still lacks user-centered studies to gain a deeper understanding of how people perceive and feel about such interactions at home. We designed an elicitation study to investigate the desirability of agent-initiated interventions. We wanted to first see under which circumstances is proactive behavior by a voice assistant perceived as desirable, then see how should these interventions be initiated by the voice assistant. To answer our research questions, we designed a set of storyboards illustrating a range of possible proactive interventions in a home environment. This is one example. Marta and Jonas are having lunch and discussing their plans for the evening. Jonas says we agreed to meet at 7 p.m. Marta says we were supposed to meet in front of the cinema at 6 p.m. The agent responds, if I may interrupt, Marta is right. You decided yesterday that you will meet at 6 p.m. We use an approach inspired by scenario-based design methods and vignette experiments, which allows us to investigate upcoming technologies despite current technological limitations. All scenarios were presented as cartoon sketches with two panels. The storyboards were designed in a way that they should minimize any cultural and ethnic cues so the participants could put themselves in the shoes of the characters. The characters were designed without any facial expressions to avoid influencing participants' interpretation of the scenarios. The fictional agent was given the gender ambiguous name J to reduce gender bias. We used nine scenarios for our study. Regarding the detailed procedure of how the scenarios were designed and selected, please refer to our paper. We conducted online interviews where we used an interactive task-based procedure. For this, in addition to asking participants for their general thoughts on the scenarios, they were asked to complete different tasks on a virtual whiteboard. This allowed us to explore in-depth deliberations around proactive features and collect richer data. In an initial short interview, we gathered first impressions of the individual scenarios. Afterwards, participants were asked to sort the scenarios in terms of usefulness, appropriateness, and invasiveness in a card sorting task. After that, they speculated how each scenario may evolve and how the characters may respond to Jay's intervention. Later, participants were asked to choose the most invasive and the most inappropriate scenarios to then reimagine an improved intervention. In the final task, participants were asked to decide for each scenario how they would like the VA to initiate the interaction. The session concluded with a short semi-structured interview. Here's a screenshot of our card sorting task in Miro. Participants all received a short tutorial on how to work with Miro prior to the study. 15 people participated in our study aged from 22 to 35 years. All participants were proficient in English. Our sessions took approximately 51 minutes on average. Overall, our findings point to diverse opinions on proactive behaviors of a smart speaker. Some generally lack proactive interventions and value the additional features. Some dislike these features while others had mixed feelings. This scenario, where the agent alerts the household members about a fire, was considered most useful, most appropriate, 
and least invasive by most participants. On the other hand, this scenario where during quiz night the agent reveals the correct solution before the players had a chance to answer was ranked least useful and least appropriate. This came to no surprise as we included problematic or delicate scenarios to cover a broad design space of interactions. Participants ranked this scenario where the agent intervenes to settle the disagreement as most invasive and found it highly inappropriate. We observed considerable similarities between the outcome of the three factors. Median ranks of how useful and appropriate the scenarios were assessed strongly correlate. The usefulness is furthermore negatively correlated with the invasiveness. And similarly, this strong negative correlation occurs between appropriateness and invasiveness. An important factor for the proactive assistant's perceived helpfulness was the amount of time its intervention could save the user. Further, reacting to indirect calls for assistance was also highlighted. The urgency of an intervention appeared to be a key determinant for how positively it was perceived. Agents' proactive intervention was perceived as highly useful when users' health might be at risk. In such cases, people would not prioritize their privacy. Proactively reminding users about their important upcoming activities or events was also highlighted as an appropriate and useful intervention. The familiarity of such interactions through existing digital services could be a reason for the acceptance of such interventions. These results show that there are several situations in which users find the proactivity both useful and appropriate. However, a common pattern that we noticed was the dilemma of proactive interventions being perceived as helpful but at the same time disproportionately intrusive. We call this the proactivity dilemma. For several scenarios, participants were ambivalent about whether the intervention was overall desirable or not, a double-edged sword. This conflict of useful but invasive interventions is also visible in the graph. Here we see the medians and 75% ranges of the card sorting ranks of mapping usefulness to appropriateness and to invasiveness for different types of interaction. One can clearly see that the relationship between both dimensions is not as uniform on the right graph as it is on the left, and the former also shows a somewhat wider spread. Even though we asked our participants to put aside any privacy and data protection concerns, they were still the biggest worries. Some participants were concerned about the misuse of personal data for hidden agendas or providing proactive advertisements. Another concern was about an entity intruding the private environment. Participants argued that people would constantly feel observed or judged. The participants associated these interferences with paternalism and lack of control over the device, fearing negative social repercussions in multi-user settings. In multi-user scenarios, the interventions in which the agent would help people to resolve an issue and save time were perceived positively. However, these were only perceived to be appropriate when the people had a chance to first try to resolve the matter by themselves. Participants generally thought that when the agent detected a question that was aimed at other people, Responding to such questions before the intended person got a chance to respond was perceived as annoying and interfering. But if the intended person could not properly respond, the agent's intervention was considered useful and appropriate. Some participants raised the concern about the agent taking away an opportunity of bonding. They frequently mentioned that the agent's intervention in social situations could potentially damage human-human interaction. Understanding the relationship between the people who are co-located, as well as the seriousness and intimacy of the conversation, were pointed out as important factors for the appropriateness of the intervention. Moreover, when the agent corrected people, most participants found it inappropriate, annoying, patronizing, or even insulting. Nevertheless, some still found it highly useful and wished for such systems in their households. Participants were concerned about their possible loss of agency. The feeling of being controlled and patronized by an agent was expressed as a worry. Several participants did not like it when the agent was suggesting healthier behavior. The factors that would increase the chance of appropriateness for such interventions were the phrasing and the predictability of the interaction. Correspondingly, participants wanted to configure times and topics of interventions so that they could anticipate interaction to some extent and have more authority. It was suggested for these systems to be highly customizable and personalized based on individual user needs. For instance, some participants suggested the possibility to switch proactivity off temporarily. Others wanted to regulate interventions based on who is present in the room. 
some suggested to limit proactivity at specific times of the day. In terms of introducing proactive interventions, for most of the interactions, participants suggested that the agent should ask for permission or give some kind of a cue before speaking. Either non-verbal cues using a visual or auditory signal or verbal cues such as, sorry to interrupt. Some thought it would be a good compromise to first announce the subject without being too specific yet, such as, I noticed something about your TV usage, would you like me to share it? Based on our findings, we propose an initiation process model for voice assistance to proactively approach users in a non-urgent situation. It starts with an initial cue where the agent indicates that it would like to speak. After user approval, the agent moves on with introducing the topic of intervention. If that is also approved by the user, the agent can proceed with the action. In urgent cases, for less sensitive topics or in single user settings, the second step could be skipped or combined with the first. Based on the interpretation of our results, we believe that the desirability of proactive interactions mainly depends on the following factors. Significance. The more urgent or critical the topic, the more appropriate it is for the agent to proactively intervene. Social context and environment. Proactive agents should accurately identify the environmental and social context, including the presence of other users or guests, the closeness of their relationships, the type of sensitivity of the ongoing activity, and the time of the day. Agency and control. Users should be able to adjust and configure proactive features, including the times and topics for interventions, when the agent is allowed to listen and observe its environment, and when it is allowed to intervene so that they could anticipate such interactions. Individual user factors. Proactive voice assistants should be able to consider individual user factors, such as physical and cognitive abilities, the current physical and emotional state, and the personality and preferences of the user. Form of execution. When initiating an interaction, the agent should generally first request permission using verbal or nonverbal cues and announce the topic of intervention. Furthermore, the intent should be phrased politely and not imposing, while being goal-oriented and concise. Altogether, as long as the proactivity dilemma is carefully considered by finding a positive balance with suggestions that are perceived as more helpful than invasive, there seems to be great potential in proactive voice assistance. The presented research is the result of a collaborative work between University of Bremen, University College London, Ludwig Maximilian University of Munich, and the University of St. Gallen. For any further questions regarding our research, please refer to our paper and feel free to contact us.